Welcome to the third section of the course entitled One Man's Garbage is Another Man's Gold. As we will see, the outcome of a promise can be considered success by one action, but failure by another, and vice versa. So we'll see how to deal with that. There are several difficulties in handling asynchronous flows, and in this section we will go through four of the features that promises implement, and that can help handle such flows. So we'll start with first of all executing several asynchronous actions in series, which we call chaining promises. Next we will learn to transform data or promise resolution value to make it more usable for the next process. Then we will look into two features that are similar, where we will turn a promise that was resolved into a rejected one, and in reverse we will also make a reject into a resolve. But let's start off by building a flow of asynchronous processes. When using a series flow, we call that chaining promises. So in this video, we are going to start by showing that every one of the handler setters, which are .then, .catch, and .finally if you're using Angular, well, all of them return a new promise object. And we will use that to chain the setting of handlers. But more importantly, we will see how we can keep the flow going by returning a promise in each step. To illustrate those concepts, we will create a weather forecast widget for your current location, which consists of four processes in series, each one needing the outcome of the previous in order to proceed. So to get started, we're going to open the developer console, which is convenient when you want to test simple things out. We're going to create a first promise, let's call it promise one. And here's a useful trick to create a promise that simply resolves. You can type promise1 equals promise.resolve and pass any resolution value. So if you have a look at what promise1 is now, you'll see that it is a promise object, which by the way is in the state resolved with value 42. But we're not really interested in that at this stage. What is more interesting to us here is that we're going to use dot then to add a callback to this promise. And what the dot then call will return is actually a new promise. Let's do this. Promise2 is equal to promise1.then. And let's add an empty callback for resolution. And you can see that indeed, promise2 is also a promise object. And it is quite clear that it is a different one because its state is different. It is pending. You could also check promise2 triple equal promise1. And you will get false, which confirms that promise2 is a brand new promise. Let's do this one more time with a dot catch this time. Promise3 equals promise2.catch, and again, any callback will do for now. And we get a new promise again, which is confirmed when typing promise3 triple equal promise1, and that shows false. So every time you add a new handler on a promise, you get a new promise object. Let's see how those two promises relate, and how we can use this to our advantage. Alright, let's set up our new widget, a weather forecast for your location. Open index.html and we have added a new div element as for all the other widgets. Now because we intend to display data along the way, let's use Angular, although we will not use anything that is incompatible with ES6 promises. So let's set a controller for that div element called weather forecast controller. And in order to see the process unfolding one step at a time, we will have a first paragraph in which we will display the geolocation as latitude and longitude. Next will be the actual address or rather the city and the country. And finally the forecast and a temperature display. Now I've mentioned before that it is a good thing when working with more complex flows to actually write down what are the various steps involved. Let's do this here. The flow will be as follows. First, we will get the geolocation from the navigator. We've seen how to do that. Then we will call the Google reverse geocoding API to get our current address from which we will extract the city and the country. Next, we will call the AccuWeather search API to transform that city and country into an ID, which is internal to AccuWeather. And finally, we will ask AccuWeather for the forecast using that ID. Of course, each one of those processes is asynchronous. And the process in its entirety is basically one big asynchronous process made of several building blocks. And it has two outcomes. Either we display the forecast or we alert an error message if something went wrong anywhere along the way. 
So here we will start to really grasp how much promises can be helpful. Okay, let's move to app.js to prepare the code. So we'll create the weather forecast controller and let's request all the services we need. Dollar scope to display things, dollar HTTP for the API calls, and the location service we built earlier, which wraps the navigator's get current position into a promise. The first action is to get geolocation using that location service. And that gives us a promise so we can write dot then and the callback, which receives a geolocation object. Let's call it geo. For a bit of visual, we'll write the locations on the scope. So dollar scope dot latitude longitude equals the latitude coordinate plus the longitude coordinate separated by a comma. Now within the callback, meaning once we have got the coordinates, we need to call the Google API. Let's do this with a $HTTP call, which uses the latitude and longitude in the URL. Again, this is a promise, so we'll type $HTTP.get, the URL, and follow up with a dot then. The callback receives a full response object in which the data is contained inside response.data. It has an array of results. Let's use the first one. And that result itself has an address components array. Here we'll briefly work on extracting the data, basically iterate through the components and only grab locality and country. After this process, a query should be an array of two strings, one for city and one for country, which is what the following API from IQWeather needs. Let's display what we have on the scope. So $scope.city equals query.join, comma. Again, from within the callback, meaning once we have the city, we're going to call the search API point of AccuWeather. You can refer to the AccuWeather API documentation for more information, but basically we are calling a point using $http.get, the URL, and we need to pass the city and country as a Q parameter in the URL. Once more, this will give us a promise, and so we continue with .then, and a callback which receives a HTTP response. And we read the data from the first result again. We're almost there, now that the result of the AccuWeather search provided us with an ID. We just need to make one last call to another AccuWeather API point. This one's slightly different because we point to the ID.json. And we use $http.get with the URL. And once again, that gives us a promise. So we attach a dot then, which receives a HTTP response. That response has a result which we can finally use to display the current weather and temperature onto our browser. Great, let's have a look at the result here. Here the location appears first, followed by the city name, and after a little while, the actual weather shows up. Now this is already pretty nice, nothing was too troublesome along the way. But let's look back at the code, and there are two obvious issues here. First, each block is completely not reusable outside of this very specific flow. Also, you can see that our code is just moving towards the right a fair bit instead of really moving forward as the flow actually does. Now here comes the great thing about promises.then. Not only does it return a new promise, but if the callback itself returns a promise, the outside promise, the new one, will actually resolve and reject in the same way than the inside promise does. Don't worry, it will all be clear in a second. So what does this mean in our example? Well, instead of using a $http.get to the Google API, and once again attaching a .then callback on that one, we can actually simply return the $http.get promise. The then callback which we had on $http.get moves one level up in the callback stack and one level left in the indentation. And that next function still receives the same response object that the $http.get provides. So even though the next dot then is not directly on the $http.get call, as you can see here, it is on the same level as the original get geolocation dot then. But because we returned a promise inside the first callback, we will now receive the result of that promise in the next dot then call. Now, besides looking nicer in terms of indentation, 
What's really great is that this really closes the get geolocation part of the flow. It is complete and we are not within its callback anymore. The next process, which is to grab the address from a latitude and longitude, is completely encapsulated. Of course, we can apply the same concept to all the next $HTTP calls, meaning we don't put any dot then on those calls anymore. Instead, we return the $HTTP calls and the dot then move back up in the indentation chain. The synchronous part, which is about finding the city from the list of address components, doesn't change. But once we have the city, we just return the new $HTTP.get call. And once we do that for every step in the process, you can clearly see the code moving forward. And you can actually relate each of these clearly standalone dot then calls to each of the boxes in the flow we drew earlier. This also means that we can abstract each and every one of these processes into services for better reusability. So this is what we call chaining promises, because as long as your dot then callback returns a promise object, the promise will be executed in series, with the outcome of the previous promise becoming what the next dot then has access to. And that simplifies asynchronous flows tremendously, almost making them look like synchronous if-else statement, or rather try-catch statement. So in this video, we have learned how to chain promises, which allows us to handle a series of asynchronous events in a very clean manner. As you could see though, in $HTTP.get calls, we are receiving entire response objects. If we created a proper service to abstract the loading of some data, we would want the controller to receive data only, not a full HTTP response. So in the next video, we will learn how to modify the resolution value of a promise and thus how to make API data user-ready.